So Perek Zayin, Halachat Tet Wow, in the Rechol uh, Namurei edition, which is Halacha Zayin in other editions. Hanavi, Efshar Shetia Nevoatho La'asmo Bilevav, the prophecy, the uh, when when a Navi achieves a state of prophecy, which we said earlier for Nevi'im other than Moshe Rabbeinu is not a constant state, not a constant ongoing reality, not something that they can simply switch on and off. Rambam wrote this previously when he said in Halakha Heth or Dalet, Kol Hanavim and Mithnabim Bechol Eth Shiyilasu. So not all Nevi'im can maintain this state of connection and uh, focus, and that therefore the channel is not open, so to speak. But when a prophet does achieve this, he can he can either be efshar shetia nevoatol asmo bilavav. They can be for his own purpose, in other words, to show him, inform him of things, show him things, cause him to understand things that he previously did, did not understand that an average human being would not be able to perceive. Larhiv libo to literally um, deepen his perception, his, his understanding. So that he now is aware and perceives uh, deep, profound things of which he was unaware previously. It may be, therefore, that this Nevoa is only for that Navi himself and is not something that he is required to communicate to others. We have Shar and is also possible. She is Shulah Laam Meamehares or Lan Shayir or Mablacha. It is also possible, as we see frequently in the Tanakh, that a Navi is instructed to inform of a, a certain nation or, or people or group of people or a, a city of something, some information or some uh, event that pertains to them, to, to uh, inform them, to cause them to understand, to inform is to inform uh, is to cause them to understand something that they would not previously have understood. To tell them what they should do or to prevent them from doing, uh, behaving in, in a negative, in, a, in an evil, negative way. So an example of this would be Yonah ben Amitai, the Mashal, in the city of Nineveh. And when such a person is sent, he is provided with some kind of sign to demonstrate so that people will know and understand who he is because in such cases, people will probably not know anything about him or they may not be certain. So he is given some sign, something to, uh, some way of proving that he is uh, who he claims to be. And this would generally be by way of predicting a future event successfully, which would then, uh, which would then come to pass. And people would then understand that they should uh, take note of what he says. Rambam continues, Alachat Teth Zain, or continuation of Zain, Wolo Chol Haose Oth Umofet, Ma'aminim Otho Shehu Navi. 
on the other hand, the Rambam says, you should not think that in order for someone to be accepted, in order to prove himself and be accepted as a Navi, any person who performs any kind of uh, miraculous act or, or predicts the future is immediately received and uh, accepted as a Navi. However, if we are talking about a person who was known to us previously, someone who is Ra'ui, who is worthy of being a Navi, as we described earlier, someone who is head and shoulders above above uh, others, people of his time, his generation, his age. Uh, age is, is, a, is a, uh, an important factor also, as we see at the, at the beginning of Sefer Yirmiyah, for example, where Yirmiyah, we see that a description of uh, the first time that uh, Yirmiyah re receives Nevoah, and he is at that time very young. And uh, and Yirmiyahu says to Hashem, no one's going to pay any attention to, to me. Who I'm just some young fellow. Perhaps he was uh, in his late teens. He speaks and describes himself as being a Nahar. So such things can be uh, an obstacle in terms of being accepted. So first of all, the person has to be, he has to be, uh, as Rambam wrote in Perek uh, Shavi'i, and this Perek at the beginning, he spoke about uh, a person being uh, a person who is uh, complete, as he describes the beginning of the Perek. A person is a Hacham Gadol, Gibor uh, He is known and perceived by people to be. Uh, a special, a very impressive uh, individual. So if a person is known to be such, and he uh, was someone known to, as it were, uh, to be practicing and training himself in, in those techniques and those behaviors, of uh, Kiddusha and Purishuth, as we described earlier. We mentioned that the word Purishuth refers to uh, Purishuth Minatum'a. Such a person who then demonstrates some unique ability, some miraculous uh, cap uh, capability to to the public and he claims and he says that that hashem sent me it is something that we that then we are required to listen to this person as it says in the pasuk in devarim to such a navi you must listen you must pay attention and you must obey As we mentioned earlier, uh, Rambam sometimes uses uh, Arabic idioms rather than uh, the Hebrew idiom. So we would say in Hebrew, miswali shmua lo, to obey him, not shmua mimenu, which is the Arab idiom. Furthermore, says Rambam, where none of it is also possible. For a person uh, to perform some unique uh, supernatural uh, event or, or uh, maybe predict the future. The, the word is really from the Aramaic, 
In other words, there is, there is something to what he says. The word Bukha literally means inside. There is something inside it. There is something there. In other words, uh, it's possible that this ability that he seems to have to do, some, to do something that others cannot do is some kind of a trick or some kind of a... Uh, there is, a, some, there is some explanation for what he is doing. Uh, and nevertheless, we are commanded to obey and to listen to such a person. Why? Seeing that we know him to be uh, a great uh, man in terms of his wisdom, his knowledge, and that we see that he is someone who fits the bill of Nivua, as we saw before. Then we assume such a person, because we are, is, a, is a Navi. Uh, we assume that what he says is true, as long as we are not aware of, of uh, some reason why we should we should doubt, doubt this person. Just as the Torah instructs us to accept the the uh, testimony of two witnesses who are kasher, I stress the word kasher, because some two people uh, re regarding whom we do not know that they are kasher or regarding uh, um, Regarding whom we know that they are not kasher, they're such a such testimony is worthless. And therefore, you understand that uh, what goes on in most courtrooms, in most places, is of no. So, just as we are instructed by the Torah to behave in a certain manner when confronted with the testimony of two edim kasherim. Um, even though it is technically possible that a person who is giving testimony to a Beth Din and he is defined as a as a person who is kashir, it is possible that he's lying, theoretically, correct? Nevertheless, the Torah tells us to accept the testimony of such a person if he is kasher, unless we know or have reason to suspect that he is lying. As long as we know these people to be edim uh, we assume that what they say is true. The same is true with regards to Navi, says, says Rambam. If the person, if we know a person to be the right type of person, certainly if he has proved himself in the past to be in the VMF, then as long as that is the case, uh, we are required to take note of what, what he says and believe him. And with regards to this, it states in the Pasuk, in the Varim, in other words, it is always possible that we are being misled, and only Hashem knows the truth uh, with certainty. But we have to work with uh, the information and the uh, the uh, facts as we know them. And the the hidden things are for Hashem, and the that which is. Galui, which is uh, available and uh, knowable to us, we with that we must work. When Emar it states also, Ki Adam la A human being uh, can only see with his eyes, and there are certain things that can be hidden from a person. But Hashem sees the tree into the heart. Hashem knows the the absolute truth. So the Rambam. In, to sum up what the Ramam just said here, 
is that when we are confronted with a person who fits the description of of, uh, of, of the Chachamim, what kind of person can be a Novi? And uh, such a person also is able to predict future events successfully. Once he is as a hazaka of of uh, and he and he claims that he was sent by Hashem, it wasn't just a lucky guess that he worked out that what he said, what he predicted, came to pass. Once a person has established his himself as a novi, we are required to listen to what he says and to believe what he says until uh, we have very cogent uh, reason to think otherwise. Very well, we continue. Pedic Shemini, chapter 8. This Pedic deals with specifically with the Nuvu'ah of uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, first of all. Rambam says, Moshe Rabbeinu, lo he'aminu bo Yisrael mipanei ha'othoth she'asa. Moshe Rabbeinu was not believed by the Jewish people at that time because of the authority, because of the miracles that he performed. If a person believes that a Navi is speaking the truth because he sees that he's able to perform uh, acts which others cannot. If a person believes for that reason, there is room for doubt. It is possible that there is some um, some kind of um, magician's trick or some some kind of um, ability this person has to hoodwink people and to seem to be able to do certain things which in fact he is unable to do. So there's always room for doubt. Ela. The reason, the, the motivation for doing various uh, miracles in the case of Moshe Rabbeinu was because they were required, it was necessary at that time, at that juncture. It was not in order to prove that he was a Navi. He says, It was necessary to, to drown the Egyptians. And, uh, and Moshe, because he was instructed by Hashem to do so, and because Hashem uh, wished it to be so, he was able to split the sea and the Egyptians were drowned. When it was necessary, to provide sustenance to the people, Horid Lahem et Halan. The man was uh, was made to appear. Sama'u, and when they were thirsty, Baka Lahem et Haevan. He, he uh, as we know, he struck the rock and uh, water flowed from it. Kafaru Bo Agat Korah, when Korah. While the thought Korah and his supporters challenged him, the, the earth swallowed them up. All these were done, says Rambam, because the circumstances demanded such a thing at that, at that time. They were not in order to demonstrate that he was a Navi. So why did and how, for what reason did people believe him? The pivotal event that proved for all time that Moshe Rabbeinu was, was emet, Moshe emet, unavuatho emet, vuthoratho emet, was Ma'amad Har Sinai. Because at that time, Sha'inenu ra'u melozar, we saw ourselves with our own eyes. We saw with our eyes, we heard with our ears. We saw the uh, pyrotechnics on the summit of Har Sinai. This was seen 
and experienced by all. And he entered the uh, the mist. And a voice spoke to him. And we and we the people heard. Moshe, Moshe, lech emodahem kach lechach. We heard a voice speaking to Moshe, instructing him to say this or to do that. Rechen hu omer, as it states in the pasuk in Devarim, panim befanim biber Adonai machem. Hashem spoke to you face to face. In other words, not just to Moshe, he spoke to you. In other words, to all of you. You all heard, you all saw uh, these events in a manner which left no doubt. It states over there as well. This is in Pedakei and Sefer Devarim. The parasha that begins with the words, Wa'ikra Moshe. It says that, This covenant or this uh, establishing these facts was not done with your forefathers, but you yourselves saw and heard these things. From where do we know that this is the case, that the, the uh, unique and uh, outstanding event of Har Sinai is, is the proof for the Nuvoa of Moshe Rabbeinu, which leaves no doubt. Shenemar. It says in the Pasuk, I shall come to you in a cloud. In other words, there will be clouds on the mountain, etc. So that the people will hear me speaking with you. In other words, this was announced ahead of time by Hashem. This will be this will be the uh, Reality. This will take place, and people will, the people will hear and see. And and they, as a result, will believe in you for all time. Michalal, and from this we understand. We understand, therefore, that up to this to this time, till that point in time. The people were not 100% con- convinced of uh, everything that Moshe said. They believed, but they nevertheless were not 100% convinced. They, were, they, they thought it, believed it to be so, but there's, there was still some room for, for doubt. That when they saw these events of Ma'amal Har Sinai, which the Torah describes at length in detail, uh, this put an end to all doubt. Therefore, those to whom Moshe Rabbeinu was sent, they themselves are able to testify to his nevoa that it is true. He, he, he does not have to perform any miracle or do anything in particular from that moment on uh, so that people will believe him. In other words, both he and they, the people, saw themselves. Like two witnesses who both witnessed a certain event together at the same time. Each testifies to that which the other one states, because they say we saw this together at the same time. We don't require two Edim, Shne Edim, to come and uh, testify with regards to each of those two Edim. 
that what they say is true and what they they claim they saw together is true. And two, they didn't come together and say we were in a certain time, a certain place. And um, we saw so-and-so do such-and-such, or we saw this in this event. They are, they are immediately believed, as it tells us to believe. It tells us to believe these people. Neither one has to provide any additional evidence or proof for his uh, for his associate. So it is with Moshe Rabbeinu. Call Israel Idimlo, Ahar Ma'abad Har Sinai. All of Am Yisrael from that moment onwards, from the time of Ma'abad Har Sinai, all of Am Yisrael were Idim, witnessed and can testify to what they saw. Where no Tzurich La'asof Lehem Oth, and he is not required to perform any miracle from that moment on. Previously, when Moshe Rabbeinu arrived in Misraim, he was sent with the ability to perform certain miraculous deeds, as we know. Uh, at that time, it was necessary. But from the time of Ma'amal Harsinai, it was no, this was no longer required. Was there, and this is what Rambam now tells us, was there who she'amar lo ha'kodesh baruch hu bit'hilat nubu'atho? And that, what, this is what Hashem stated to Moshe Rabbeinu at the beginning of his prophetic, prophetic career. When he instructed him to perform uh, certain deeds in Misraim. And there, the Pasuk states, when you do these things to, uh, in front of them, they will, they will believe you. They will uh, accept what you say. Moshe Rabbeinu knew that when a person is convinced only by uh, some unique event or apparently miraculous ability, supernatural ability, there is always room for that. And thus, Moshe Rabbeinu was reluctant to go to Mitzrayim. And he said to, Moshe, to Hashem, explicitly in the Pasuk, They will not believe me. I will come to them and I will say, I was, uh, I have been in communication with the with Hashem, the God of your fathers. And they will say, yeah, sure, we've heard other people make such claims. There are always people who will claim to be uh, in communication with God, etc. But uh, Hashem spoke to him and said, Moshe Rabbeinu was told, these, uh, these things that I have told you to perform in front of them, so they will uh, take note of what you say. This is only for the for the initial period of your of your uh, role leading the people. After Yisro by Mitzrayim, until they leave Mitzrayim. Well, Harsha Yisro we amdu ala har hazeh, and only later when they come to this place, to this uh, mountain Har Sinai, where this conversation took place. Then there will be no, no more doubt left in their heart. Because at that time they will see and witness things that will leave no doubt in their mind at all. And they will know that everything that you have said to them from the outset was true and it was, it was in my name. They will have no, no more doubt. And that is what the Pasuk states in Sefer uh, Shemot. And this, 
this will be the, the proof. Ki anuchi shalachticha. That I have sent you and that what you say is true. When you take them out of Mitzrayim, at that time you will come to this place and things will happen here that will be the final and complete definite proof of, of, uh, of your status and the, the veracity of whatever you say. Rambam therefore says, Nimsetha Omer. So, what we have understood, says Rambam, is as follows. Shekol Navi, Sheya'amod the Ham Moshe Rabbeinu, any prophet who comes along from the time of Moshe Rabbeinu onwards. En anu ma'aminim bo mipnei ha'oth levado. We do not accept such a person only because, simply because of uh, the ability to perform some miracle, some uh, Outstanding, unique event. And therefore, we do we do not say if this person is able to perform some something supernatural, we will accept what he says. That is not so. We accept a navi, someone that we know to be a navi. We accept what he says because of what it says in the Torah, where the Torah tells us, It is not because, it's not the miracle that forces us to accept what the Navi says. It is because the Torah tells us that if such a person is able to perform a, a miracle or to predict the, the future, and you see that he does so, successfully, the Torah it tells us you must listen and accept what such a person tells you. That is why we accept uh, NLV. And this is why we are required to listen to what he says. As the Torah instructs us to accept the, the, the testimony of two witnesses. Even though we cannot know for certain that what these two people claim is true. Theoretically, it could be it could be false. But the Torah tells us if two people who are edim kesherim, who uh, therefore we have reason to accept them, they have a hazaka. We can we must assume them they are that they are uh, speaking the truth. If two people come and tell us a, a particular thing. And their statements are in total agreement with one another. We accept what they say, and we we act upon that testimony. <laughs> Thus, it is with the navi. Once he has established his credentials, we accept what he says because the Torah tells us to listen to such a person. <laughs> Even though we cannot be certain that uh, the the miraculous ability that he demonstrated is uh, is not some kind of a trick, because there are people who can perform such uh, apparently miraculous events, and they're not Naveen, they are tricksters. Therefore, Rambam says, "If Naveen." comes along and performs a miraculous and the outstanding uh, events. Uvikesh lachish nevuato shel Moshe Rabbeinu. And having done so, he then says, uh, I have been sent by Hashem to undo the Torah, to uh, contradict the nevuah of Moshe Rabbeinu. And shumayim lo, we do not for a moment, listen to and accept what such a person says. And we know for a fact, and then we know for a fact that anything that he was able to perform that seemed to us miraculous was some kind of a trick. Because this 
by definition, cannot be a nevoah from Hashem. Lefishi nevoah Moshe Rabbeinu, ena al pi haothot. Just as the nevoah Moshe Rabbeinu, we accepted not because of miracles. Kadeshe na'aroch othot ze, lo othot ze. If it's all based on the ability to perform miracles, then one might say, well, Moshe Rabbeinu in the past uh, was able to do miraculous things. And so is this person here before us now. And uh, so therefore, we, as we accepted his miracle, we'll accept this person's miracle or this uh, inexplicable ability that this person seems to have. That is not so. In the case of Moshe Rabbeinu, we saw uh, and uh, without doubt that Moshe Rabbeinu was in, in uh, communication with Hashem and the Torah instructs us to listen and follow Nevi'im uh, when when they tell us that this is what Hashem instructed them to do, but not and because the Torah tells us to listen to such nevim, allow tishma'un, you shall listen to such a person, not because of uh, what seems to be a, a supernatural uh, ability. So what can this be like? And says Rambam Le'edim Sheheidu Le'adam Al Davar Shera'a Be'ino Sheno Kamo Kamo Shera'a If two witnesses were to come to a person who saw a, a particular event, who witnessed something, and two people who seem to be kasher, and they normally would accept what such people say, two people come to him and say, uh, what you saw is not such and such, but something else. In other words, what, what he knows to be true, because he experienced it and saw it with his own eyes, this thing is not true. You're mistaken. That person will not believe them, these two witnesses. He does not take take any notice of what they say. He, rather, he knows for a fact that they are lying for whatever reason. In the same way, a person who comes along and, and uh, seems to be able to do certain things that others cannot do, and he tells us that uh, I am here to, to undo or to contradict or to change that which Moshe Rabbeinu said to you, we know this to be, by definition, we know this to be a lie, and therefore we do not accept it. We shall stop here for today. Ayu Beruchim, his crew, Yamas Lebab Chaim Kol, Amea Halim, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message, and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.